Roger that. Greetings gamers, this is Locklear coming at you with Locks Picks, where I review games that I think are worth talking about. All of my reviews are split into sections rating different aspects of the game. This first review is for Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. So, the Metal Gear series, one of the longest running stories in the industry. This game series is known best for its cardboard boxes, crazy boss fights, and its quirky, crazy, and complicated story. I've never had to use a game wiki so many times to even start to grasp all the little woven story threads that appear throughout all the games. This may sound like a criticism, but I really do appreciate the depth that the series as a whole provides. There are many characters that have deep histories and stay relevant throughout the whole series, and while the overall Metal Gear story has a major plot and theme, each Metal Gear game has its own focus and perspective. This is why it's important to appreciate the game as a part of the whole series. The Phantom Pain deviates a bit from the norm of the other games, which isn't always a bad thing. While the other games seem to have a primary focus on their narrative, The Phantom Pain has a stronger focus on the gameplay. Let's start with the basics. The controls are amazingly smooth, which is a massive improvement over the previous Metal Gear titles. You can climb, sprint, walk at any speed, crouch, and crawl. Transitioning between any of these movements feels nice and natural. The gunplay feels great. Switching weapons and items is easy, and pulling out your weapon to aim takes less than a second. And since we're mentioning equipment, there are tons of items, abilities, and equipment to research for the currency you get from completing missions. You have all your different categories of guns, placed items like explosives and decoys, thrown items like grenades, armor, and of course, boxes to hide under. Stealth is the best I've seen in a while. Enemies' ability to see you changes depending on the time of day, the weather, and if you're crawling or walking. If an enemy notices you, you get a bullet time-esque slow motion reaction that happens automatically giving you time to take them out before they tell their friends. Nothing beats spending the time and effort to knock out a base full of a dozen armed guards that you scouted out, dodging spotlights, mines, flashlights, turrets, and vehicles. It feels incredibly rewarding. A great thing about the game is that the AI adapts to your choices. If you're getting a lot of headshots, more helmets appear. If you attack at night, they'll start bringing flashlights. If you try and take stuff, they'll try and stop you. If you take stuff, they can notice things that are missing and alert the rest of the base. If they see a man down, they'll call it in. The enemies get tougher as the game continues, adding riot suits, snipers, shields, and better guns. To counter this, the game lets you send your combat forces on missions to hit the enemy supply lines. You also have four buddies that you can bring with you on the missions that each add their own unique advantages and strategies to your missions. More often than not though, I stuck to one or two of them because they just seemed so much more useful. D-Dog automatically detects enemies and objectives for you, which is one of the most valuable functions in the game. Quiet can scout bases as well, just not as thoroughly, but she can cover you with sniper fire if you make a mistake and get caught. As you gain bond by using them, you can unlock hidden costumes or abilities such as Quiet shooting a grenade that you throw in midair, or D-Dog being able to stun. Upgrading your base feels more addicting than a Facebook game. You can build up different parts of your base using the resources you capture. You use the soldiers you've converted to staff your different base platforms and increase their level depending on your soldiers' abilities and how many you have. Every soldier has different stats and abilities that might make them better to work in different areas or even help you research a specific item. You can even send your soldiers on missions to gain extra rewards. Capturing guards with different stats that can help your base in different ways is heavily rewarding and feels like a glue that holds the metagame together with the gameplay. There is an interesting problem that comes with needing soldiers for your base. You have to knock them out or incapacitate them in order to bring them back, and you can't kill them. That means for most of the game it's better to use non-lethal guns and equipment. Your silent sleep inducing pistol will probably be your primary gun for the entire game, which can cause you to force a lack of gameplay variety on yourself. Overall though, the gameplay systems are phenomenal. There are systems within systems working together to create a harmony of challenges and rewards coming at you constantly. You go on missions to complete objectives which earn you cash. That in itself is fun because of the smooth controls and the reactive AI. The metagame base building and research aspects really bring it all together and give the whole thing a sense of purpose. You receive anything you found or faultened to grow your base. You grow your base to unlock better equipment, receive better intel, and everything else that helps you do missions. It feels like you're actually accomplishing something because you can literally see it with your own eyes. 
You do all of this not only for the story, but to create more opportunities for unique gameplay experiences with harder enemies, new equipment, and eventually online play. The graphical fidelity of this game is wonderful. Facial expressions are relied upon during cutscenes, and they actually did very well with it compared to many other games. The guns don't look bad, and clothes are detailed enough. Nothing really jumps out to me as bad, really. The smooth, crisp visuals make for a great action game. The one thing it could use would be more variety. There are only three environments if you include Mother Base, and they include similar color palettes. So while it could use a little spice, the visual quality of this game is definitely above average and complements the game as a whole. Now let's talk story. Typically, we see Metal Gear Solid games as being linear, story-driven experiences with crazy boss fights and lengthy cutscenes. The Phantom Pain has taken this and spun it around. While there are still a few long cutscenes, none of them compare to the other games. The boss fights are few and far between. The focus here is on the open-world gameplay, which actually makes complete sense for the purposes of a story. It's a story of Big Boss, restoring his former glory, figuring out his past, and setting his future plans in motion. So this game is set up to be the connecting piece between the other games in the series. Knowing that, it has a lot to live up to, but it's almost impossible for it to do so. The ultimate fate of everyone in the Metal Gear series is already known, so the only way to get creative is to fill in some blanks in interesting ways, such as the big twist at the final story mission. Unfortunately, that's all they can do, fill in blanks. With all this in mind, the focus on gameplay is actually a smart idea when they can't lean into the story as heavily by default. The quality of story sprinkled throughout the Phantom Pain is variable. For 80% of the missions, it's rescue this guy who can help, or take out this guy who is bad. Only a few of the missions in the game are actually meaningful or impactful. That's really disappointing because the quality you can see through the story-driven missions leaves you wanting more that you'll never get, a Phantom Pain. In fact, much of the in-depth story details appear from audio tapes that you receive over the course of the game instead of cutscenes. Well, I believe this is intended to replace the classic sit and talk over comms for 15 minutes to explain something scenes Metal Gear is known for, I still ended up sitting around listening to them anyway because if I would listen to them during a mission, I would get too distracted to really absorb the information. That being said, the story that does present itself is enjoyable. The sniper Quiet is controversially almost naked and ridiculously over-sexualized, but her character arc is the most interesting one in the game. The Skullfleece plot is a classic Metal Gear ridiculous grand scheme. The twist at the end is surprising and left me with mixed feelings, but also finishes the game's connection with the rest of the Metal Gear series. The overarching connections to other Metal Gear titles are neat, and various key characters make for interesting cameos. And though the ending is not particularly satisfying, it's arguable that it fits with the themes of the game. I enjoyed the story when it was given the light of day, but after what felt like an appetizer and half a main course, I was looking for the meat and dessert. It felt unfinished, it just left me wanting more. But honestly, knowing Kojima, that might have been the whole point of the story, a sort of meta-narrative commenting on the game itself. The audio in Metal Gear Solid 5 is fantastic. The music is subtle most of the time, but it's great. It reacts when enemies are nearby and the action increases. It's full of electronic instruments and orchestras, deep impactful basses and arpeggiations. A small driving fanfare plays every time you start and complete missions. There are a few points in the narrative where the music is prominent and it strives to either serve a thematic purpose, supplement an action scene, or accent a quiet one. The sound effects are all good quality. Guns sound great, the helicopter sounds real, your dog is a dog. You can hear footsteps along with the ruffling of all the gear you have on. During audio tapes, you can tell what people are doing at a few points by listening for sound effects. The voice acting is great quality thanks to a cast of A-list voice actors. The delivery is believable, which is good because unfortunately most of the dialogue happens through audio tapes. I think the audio is a great supplement to an already great game. Let's talk about the Fox engine. Konami has a brand new game engine built for the Phantom Pain, and it's awesome. Everything runs smoothly, and I don't recall any game-breaking bugs I ran into. I don't have a top-of-the-line computer, but because of this was optimized so well, I didn't feel like I needed one. This is actually one of the best-built AAA games I've experienced in a while. One problem that I did have, though, was what I assumed were loading times hidden by the same intro every time you start a mission. So before every mission, there's a long sequence of a camera pan around Snake's face in the helicopter with that driving musical melody I talked about earlier, 
followed by Snake opening the helicopter door to prepare for his drop-off with whatever partner you've chosen for the mission. You have to watch it every time you land anywhere, and you can't skip it, and while it didn't frustrate me to the point of rage, it does take up quite a bit of game time. The iDroid UI is cluttered with submenus because of all the functions and features it has to fulfill, and while it was obviously made with a controller in mind, I played with a mouse and keyboard. Even so, it controls well once you get used to it. Overall, this is probably not the sequel Metal Gear fans were expecting, but we all know Kojima likes to play with expectations. It hits so many good points that the flaws seem insignificant in comparison. The Phantom Pain is absolutely one of my favorite games of 2015. The gameplay was so well designed that it keeps you playing after you beat it, wanting more. The crazy story it presents will keep you thinking about it long after you finish. It's a departure in style from the previous Metal Gear titles, and feels like a breath of fresh air in a world filled with Ubisoft sequels. I would recommend it to anyone who even slightly enjoys the stealth or shooter genres, and even if you don't, this game might change your mind. Hey guys, thanks for watching my first video. Please like it and subscribe. My channel is just getting started and I hope you'll join me next time for more of Locks Picks.